There's a location in the Siamese Ponds Wilderness, just south and west of the area's namesake ponds, that is a little more than five miles from any road. And if distance from any road is your criteria, that might be the most remote place in the Adirondacks. In the high peaks, or maybe the five ponds, there are locations more than five miles from any public road, but roads on private land or restricted access roads enter those areas and reduce the any road distance. And it's not just the distance from roads. Only one trail approaches the center of the Siamese Ponds Wilderness, and the entire southern half, some 50,000 acres, is, for all practical purposes, trailless. The heart of the Siamese Ponds Wilderness is a remote place. Remote, but not untouched. In the decades before 1900, the land was logged and in a few places farmed. Miners poked around and found garnet, and much of the hemlock bark used by the tanneries concentrated to the south and east came from stands of giant old hemlock located in areas now included in the wilderness. Later, after the state acquired the land, hunters and fishermen built camps and in a few places left behind piles of junk. But as forests go, the Adirondacks are resilient and with 100 years to fill in, mature second growth dominates the landscape. And plenty of old trees, the ones the loggers didn't want, are mixed in. You can get a real sense of the place by reading the Department of Environmental Conservation's Unit Management Plan for the Siamese Ponds Wilderness. DEC's planning for wilderness and wild forest areas is summarized in documents called Unit Management Plans, and the Siamese Ponds Wilderness UMP contains a wealth of information. For example, the Siamese Ponds UMP contains a detailed history of when ponds and lakes were surveyed and which fish were present. This provides a timeline for when pike and perch and a variety of non-native fish were introduced. The forests have bounced back, but only God can make a brook trout pond. Many ponds and lakes that once contained prolific, self-sustaining brook trout populations must be stocked annually because the trout can't compete with introduced species. And so it goes. 